buongiorno and benvenuti a tutti. I'm Monica Ricci, the Director of Marketing for Opera Viva, and welcome to our conversations with Opera Viva faculty. Today, I'm speaking with Gordon Ostrowski. Gordon joins us every summer in Verona to provide career development and so much more to the students in our programs. Gordon served for many years as the Assistant Dean of the Manhattan School of Music and continues today on their Opera Studies faculty. I spoke with Gordon about all of the things he does with our students during his stay in Verona, where he provides career guidance. He sits with them one-on-one -on -one to review their resumes and their headshots. He provides audition guidance and we have mock auditions. And one of the most popular things he does is he provides a series of exercises in 18th century movement for the stage. It's a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy this conversation with Gordon. Hi, Gordon. How are you today? I'm good, Monica. How are you? Long time no see. Long time no see. No, I'm doing great. <laughs> uh, enjoying my summer, but of course, wishing that I, like, I imagine you are too, we're in Verona this summer. Yeah, really. I'm missing it. I just posted a picture of La Traviata on Facebook from uh, last summer. That was such an amazing production, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, great. I'm really happy to talk to you today about Opera Viva. And so I thought I would begin by asking you if you could give me an overview of all of the many things you do uh, with the Opera Viva students when you come to Verona every summer. Yeah, sure thing. Um, well, actually my uh, title in the program is Career Development. And uh, it's based on um, classes that I created for my students at the Manhattan School of Music when I was there as the Assistant Dean of the Opera Studio. Uh, so it's career-based but it also includes things like uh, period style and uh, well, a couple of other things. Uh, let me go through the list. Uh, the first class is on resume and photo, and it teaches a student how to uh, make their own professional resume and also how to get a good looking professional photo. This uh, next class is audition technique because that's something every student needs uh, no matter what level they're at. Uh, uh, the third one is the period style class, which is a practical about how uh, people walked in the 18th century, how to use all the accessories, uh, the um, idea of the public and private self for the aristocrats and the servants too. Uh, and then uh, we do a personalization of their arias combined with an audition technique class. So I work on the personalization, and then we try it out in a mock audition. So the, that's the first uh, week for me. And then uh, when they're free, the students also meet with me and do their resume and photo consultation. So Gordon, why don't you tell me a little bit about the uh, resume and photo consultation advice that you give to students. What's, what are some of the, the biggest sins that they commit with their photos? Well, the biggest sin with the photos is that they don't, hire a professional photographer because it's expensive, right? So I frequently hear, well, my friend took it or my mother took it and I ask where it is and it's outside, but they don't realize that there's a tree branch coming out of their head or uh, things like that. There's a chain link fence behind them, which distracts from me seeing their face, things like that. So uh, I just go through all of the different ways I, I try, if they have a photo already taken, I try and give them a, a way to maybe fix that photo with the photographer. If they consult with a the photographer, they can do some improvements, right? If they're not ready to do a new photo, it kind of depends on their age, where they are in their education, and when they really need a good photo. So obviously if they graduate from a master's program, they want a really good photo, right? So that's the goal, but we may not have that goal right at the beginning. Well, I know, as you said, Gordon, that you obviously give uh, a lecture about the resume and the photos, but you also mm -hmm. meet individually with each of the students to give them personal advice. Uh, what about the resumes? What are some of the key pieces of advice you give them about their resume? Well, the student usually tries to put too much information on the resume and they fall into the habit of using paragraphs but paragraphs are too much information. People that are busy producers don't have time to read in detail a paragraph of information, especially if it's a whole resume. So they have to get used to the idea of putting everything in columns. So there's a lot of white space around each category and it has an order and you can quickly see everything they've done regarding roles, performances, uh, awards, 
uh, things that are really want to pull the auditor into wanting to hear them. The other thing is a lot of kids don't have uh, a role on their resume that reflects their voice because they're in a school and the school is um, doing productions for various reasons, right? So I frequently see that there are maybe a, a lyric soprano, but there, none of their roles really tell me that. So I encourage them to add a role in preparation at the top, a role or two that they're working on that indicates where they're going in their voice study. And um, at the bottom, I always ask for a special skills category because if, if you can believe it, sometimes they forget when I say, uh, do you speak another language fluently? And they do, but they don't put it on their resume. Or do you, do you play an instrument and how long? And again, that's important because it shows musicianship and uh, length of study. And um, also dance training is important. So all these little things add up and they give the uh, auditor a better picture of who they're going to be hearing. I mean, it also makes them more desirable. Well, I know that uh, one of the courses that you deliver at Opera Viva that the students really enjoy and get a lot out of is the, um, the period movement uh, lecture and the exercises mm -hmm. they do. Can you tell me why you developed that course, Gordon? Yes, because uh, when I was running the opera studio at Manhattan School, uh, we would uh, you know, frequently be doing period operas. And when we got to the production, we would go into the theater and they would put on these period clothes and then they would freak out because they didn't know how to handle them. Because compared to contemporary style, uh, there is a lot of fabric and there's a certain way you have to wear it and you have to move in it, all right? So I developed a period movement class where we can't have the costumes in our um, class because we're upstairs and you know the costumes aren't ready yet. But at least in looking at artwork, they can see the costume and I give them the walk in the period where they have to look like they're floating as they're walking in an aristocratic style. And then I break it down for the different levels in the household to so the servants and the gardeners and how does all of these different people walk based on what their station is in life, right? Um, and that led me to creating what we call a private moment to make the character more three-dimensional for the student. So they have to, uh, create a moment when their character is off stage and they go to their room and they perform a series of actions when they're alone relating to their situation. So it really sparks the student's imagination and they have to find um, a musical selection that isn't from the opera, but it's from the period in which the character is living. They must have heard the music in their life somehow. And that also sets off all of these uh, uh, juicing thoughts, you know, for the student and just, they come to life. Uh, and uh, we've had some really moving moments at Opera Viva uh, too with, the, with that group of uh, students. So then there's also the idea of the public and private self, which the aristocrat uh, had a public face and they showed their emotions when they were private and alone. And the servants too, the servants had a public face and a private face. So uh, anyway, it's, it's been revelatory. And I always ask the students, did you make any discoveries in doing this assignment? And they, one of the students said one day, well, um, it made me think of my character as a real person. And I think if they say that, I've accomplished my goal. For example, I just did an Inwood Artworks podcast two weeks ago. Um, and this uh, guy came down and was observing and I would, I, I knew I knew him because I worked with uh, those uh, a lot of singers for 18 years at Chautauqua every summer, all the young artists. So uh, I was I moved near him and he said, oh, hey, Gordon, I'm Ron Lloyd. I worked with you at Chautauqua. I can't tell you how many times I use that period movement stuff because I'm he's a working singer. Well, Gordon, I know you've been coming to Opera Viva every summer for years and years. What is it about the program that attracts you to it and why do you keep coming back? Well, first of all, the faculty is very collegial and everyone works together and uh, we consult with each other. Uh, we also go out and have lovely dinners. We go to the Opera Theater of Verona with the students. Uh, but for the students, I've, I've been to several programs in Italy and what Madeline does is she really treats it like uh, it's a family and she does 
more for the students than any program I've ever been to. So there's the famous gelato crawl that they go on. On the 4th of July, she makes red, white, and blue berry pancakes. And um, she has this incredible uh, farewell pizza party where they order whatever they want. And then these waiters bring these huge platters of pizza and they keep coming as long as they want. You know, it's just an incredible um, celebration of the program and, and the experience that everyone had. And uh, it's, it's unique to uh, summer programs. Good. Okay. All right. well, thank you so much. Thank you. Gordon. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Well, I certainly enjoyed catching up with Gordon Ostrowski and I hope you enjoyed our conversation. I'd like to close out today's video by sharing a recording of an Opera Viva student performance from the summer of 2019. This is a scene from Act Two, Scene One of Turandot by Giacomo Puccini. In this scene, the advisors to the princess, Ping, Pang, and Pong, are bemoaning their state and wishing for better life. Please enjoy, and please join me next time for our ongoing series of conversations with Opera Viva faculty. Ciao a tutti. Ciao, ciao.